Welcome back to another Luke RS video. This time we're going to be taking a look at uh, the Sinti store and how we can use these assets with Godot. And what I've done, I, I, I purchased these quite a while back, not these, sorry, uh, this pack here. So I think this was 2019 and there were a lot of people at the time asking how do we use this with Godot and there wasn't a whole lot of uh, resources out there for it. Um, recently, my students have started looking at these here. We're kind of using them for educational purposes, so their games are not going to be um, released commercially in any way. And some of them are quite useful for the themes that they're going for. So I thought, how do I convert this to Godot? And I went through a few different things and figured out a pretty decent way, at least for the static assets. The animated characters um, use or seem to use Mechanum. Uh, for Unity, and I'm not familiar with how that works, so I haven't got any kind of video on that yet, but I'll have a look and see if there's some kind of um, library that we can import, some kind of um, rig library we can import into Unity and then attach, uh, not Unity, sorry, into Blender and attach the characters to that. So we'll look at that later. Now, I've just downloaded this Polygon prototype source files for now, and these are the ones you want to get, the source files. They've got the FBX in there, and we need the FBX unless you want to spend a lot of time importing individual OBJ files. Blender does not seem to support multiple imports of OBJ, only multiple imports of um, blend files. So the other thing you'll need is a tool called Capsule. So I've gone ahead and um, downloaded this. It's a Blender plugin uh, called Capsule. And I'll put that in the in the description below. It is it is free if you want to throw the guy a few dollars. Um, do that if you plan on using it quite a bit. And so I've already got this here. Um, download. This is the one you want if you're using the latest version of Blender. Capsule underscore one underscore three. So you're going to download that. So the Sinti store is this here, and there are some really great assets on here. Um, some of them are like four hundred dollars for this asset. Um, but it's absolutely stacked full of full of everything you could imagine, everything you might want to uh, create a game with. This is not sponsored by Sinti whatsoever, um, but they are a great New Zealand company. So they create a lot of these really cool things here that um, indie studios can use for getting up assets really fast without having to wait on a dedicated artist, which can sometimes be difficult for an independent developer to get, especially one that's um, got strengths in programming. So let's go into Blender. I'm just gonna load Blender. We'll load it up. And I've already downloaded that prototype pack and unzipped it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the uh, assets. I'm not going to import them all. So I'm going to import FBX. I'll delete everything that's here and file import FBX. Now I need to go ahead and find um, where that is in my download. So it should be here somewhere. What did I call it? Uh, Pro Polygon prototype, Cinti Studio source files. That's the one. Source files. Um, I want, in this case, sometimes the Sinti ones have FBX, other times they just have static meshes. Um, this one has static meshes, so I'm gonna download that. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of them. You could do this all at once. Um, this is the, one of the problems that people had with using uh, the assets there in that uh, you could import them all into Blender at once, but then exporting them, all the origins would be all over the place. So we're gonna export uh, everything using Capsule and uh, in a big batches. So I'm just gonna do this here, import FBX. All right, there's all my uh, prototype blocks. I might actually do this with a different one because it's a bit more interesting to look at. So let's go ahead and import FBX. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the, looks like simple dungeon. Here we go, source files, uh, FBX folder, and I'll just grab a bunch of these like that. Um, I might grab these floor ones here. So I'm going to import those FBX. They come in really tiny sometimes and if they're that tiny, I think if you scale them up by 10 or 20, scale them by 20, it'll bring it to this kind of standard size here. Um, I'm not sure, you may have to experiment with that. 
I'm just going to scale them up by 20 and that should be good. One unit here is one unit in Godo. I'm not sure why the FBX sometimes come in smaller. If they do, you can scale them up. If they don't, all good. Now, the main thing we need to do now is get the materials on it before we export it. So in here, I'm just going to select one of them and go to the material page. And you'll see here that it's imported all these materials, which are kind of useless for us. So I'm just going to pick one and I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call this one Dungeon Material. And down here where it says base color, it says file 1.001, that doesn't exist. I'm gonna change it to image texture. I'm gonna click on open image. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to that FBX folder, click up. Basically, I wanna to get to this textures folder that was in there. And I'm gonna select the textures folder there. If I put on the viewport shading up here, we'll see that that's been applied, so that's all good. Then I can select everything, making sure that this is the active one. I'm gonna select everything, so hit A. And then there is this little down arrow over here, material specials, copy material, and then copy to selected. It'll put it on all of these here. Now this is where we need to set capsule up. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but if you haven't added a plugin before, you're gonna to have to go to edit and then preferences. Now, there's a few steps to capsule, and I'm not sure if it's any easier than what I'm about to do, but if you know of an easier way, do that. You need to click on install up here, install an add-on. And when you go to downloads, you'll find the capsule underscore one underscore three there, and you can, you can download that. Uh, sorry, install that, so you click it and install it. I've already got it. I'm gonna go to capsule. And for this, there's a few ways you can do this, but I'll show you this way because you need to do it this way the first time. You're gonna click Create Capsule Data. And what you'll wanna do is make a preset. So I'm just gonna delete this Godo one and then I'm going to make a new one here. So Active Export Presets, we're gonna click plus. You can rename this to Godo if you want. And these are the options that I found worked. Uh, apply modifiers, and that's pretty much it for general export options. Um, you may want to export animation, but I don't think any of the static ones have animation. We're going to go to um, mesh, and all of that is all good. Uh, in fact, we don't really need to even change anything there. I think there might have been this one thing that we do need to change. Where is it? It is... Oh no, we want to change this from ABC. Uh, I found that GLTF works really well. And add up as plus Y, you want to do that. Okay, that's that's pretty much the only thing. You may want to do it as a DAE file, that also works well, but I found that GLTF, uh, GLB works pretty well in here. So just make sure that access up as plus Y is there. So then with that done, I'm gonna add it to save presets. That way I can use it again for other projects. Okay, so I'll close that. Now on the right hand side here, you'll see that there's a little capsule bit here. So I'm gonna hit all objects and you'll notice here that we've got, so A is select all if you haven't done, if you haven't used Blender at all. Um, and I'm going to change that export preset to Godot. So that'll change it for all of them. But there's this thing, if I click export all now, it's gonna give me an error um, I don't know what that error is. I hope that this is all going to be good because I've spent ages on this video so far. Um, enable export, I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, of course, you want to enable export. Um, and then the file location is set to none. But And this is the tricky bit. I can never remember where this is. We've got to go and find the file location for that somewhere in here. Here it is. So it's on the scene tab. And down here, file locations. I'm gonna export this straight into my Godo project, um, which I've got set up. So I'm gonna change this here, which I think I've got it set here. And oh, which one would it be? Uh, it's called Test 3D Terrain. Uh, I've already made a folder for it, Cinti Assets, accept. So that's it there. I'll just call this Godo project. Good idea to get into a habit of naming everything in Godo, so it's not just untitled one. And then that'll show up there. So that's all good. If I click export all, I get an error. Why? 
What's this error say? Unknown location. Well, that sucks because it worked earlier today. Let me just try this um, one more time. Select these other things here. They've all got the same um, thing ready to go. Now, this part here is really important. Object. You want to say the origin export is object. And then you want to click object uh, export all. Oh, that seemed to work that time. Maybe I didn't have it done before. There we go. So, oh great, I didn't have to redo the video. So it has finished processing 10 objects, they're all done. And if I go to my Godot project, um, you can ignore this little test scene here. Um, and I go to my Cinti assets, I'll just try importing one of them. If any of them come through with this X, you can just go up to import and re-import it and it will generally work. Uh, and now I can bring these into my scene. So that has come in there, but it's invisible. Uh, the, oh no, it's not, it's just, this is really large, this scene here. So I'll just actually delete everything that's there and start again. No, I'll just make a new scene, uh, 3D scene. So I can bring this in here. You see that that's one unit. I'll bring that one in. And they come in with the, the origin in that corner, except for that one thing, the floor dirt, which is a bit weird. Uh, I can turn on the, the snap. So that's all in there and it's got the material ready to go. So I can drag this one in, uh, move that along. I'll just turn snap on so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so that's ready to go. And you can go ahead and build that up. Now I only imported a few different floors here, so I didn't worry too much about uh, the other ones, but they're all good. They're ready to go in Godot. Of course, if you want to add um, colliders to these, which they don't have, you will have to go in and manually add them or add a collider mesh um, to these. So the way you would do that, the straightforward way is these are just the assets. If you double click on it and go new inherited and then click on the mesh and click mesh, create tri mesh static body and then save this and maybe make a new folder called scenes. So if I just go new folder, uh, scenes, and I'll save that there. You might want to give it a different name and then same with this one here. So I'll just skip down to this one. So new inherited and I can click on that and go mesh, try mesh static body. It'll create that static body, save it into scenes and kind of repeat that process. So it is a little bit time consuming, but if you're dead set on using these assets, then go ahead and um, you can, they can be used in Godot. So if you really like the look of these Cinti ones, um, don't be afraid or don't be put off if you're using Godot to develop your game. Um, there's probably not a whole lot of people using Godot for 3D at the moment, um, mainly just making little prototypes or maybe educational purposes, but uh, the Cinti stuff can be used with it. I'm going to have a look at whether the animation, uh, sorry, the characters could be used in some way, maybe if we modify them, but I also have to look at the Cinti license to see whether I can actually modify them. Um, and if not, then I, you won't see another video from me about that. But uh, these ones here can be used in, 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 Unity, Unreal, and I assume since they've given us the source files, we can use them in other things as well. But if I'm made aware that I can't, then I may have to take this video down. So we'll, we'll see. I think that this is uh, fine. We can export them from Blender and uh, no problem. You could do all of them at once this way. Um, so if I just delete that and go import FBX and I can select all of them, it's probably going to take 10 minutes to import now. And if it doesn't come up really soon, I will just end the video. Looks like it's imported quite a bit. But you'll see that there are quite a lot of materials. Here we go. Now, oh, that's a little bit annoying, isn't it? There's this one, there's this one pillar that's just bigger than everything else. Uh, so if I scale this by 20, there we go. 
Um, that all looks good. And then the materials. So you have to select one thing. And again, go to materials. And there should, oh, there's gonna be a lot of materials here, but I already made the dungeon one. Um, I don't know if, oh yeah, dungeon material, there we go. And then copy and copy to select it. All done, you can export them all. So file location, Godot project, Godot uh, object, enable export on all the objects, export them all. It's gonna to go to that location. It will sit here and kind of flash for, for ages. Um, in this case, it will take a while to do, but if I go to my Godot project, it's probably gonna start importing some of them that have, have gone through. Really straightforward. Hope this video helps someone out there. Um, drop a comment below if you uh, get stuck.